episode of What The Tech is brought to you by Away. Away makes first class luggage at coach prices that allows you to charge your phone on the go. For $20 off your order, go to awaytravel.com slash Andrew and use the promo code Andrew. That's awaytravel.com slash Andrew. And by Prime Video Channels. Amazon members only pay for the channels you want. Start your free trials of over 100 channels by visiting tryprimechannels.com slash Andrew. Everybody, welcome to What the Tech. I'm Andrew Zarin, of course. Actually, not of course. I am not joined by Paul Throat today. We are doing the show uh, for people who are watching this live and not listening. I'm in my studio, which I haven't been in a number of weeks, uh, maybe maybe a month or so, because uh, we're doing major construction here. And during the week, it's it's a total madhouse. So I'm actually in my studio right now. We're doing the show on a Sunday morning. This is a uh, first time, I think, for the show's history that we're doing a show on a Sunday morning. But Paul Therat is not here with me, but a, uh, a longtime fixture here at the GFK Network. And, of course, a, our producer, our editor, our web admin, our everything, John Bub. How you doing, John? I'm doing pretty good. That's a uh, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, you see what I did there? Pretty good. How you doing, John? Long time <laughs> no see. I mean, we haven't done a show in God knows how long, right? Years. Oh, my God. It's been at, over a year for sure. Yeah. If yeah. not longer. Yeah, things may be changing soon. Let me just put that out there. Things we'll see. may be changing. We'll see. As in the, um, I, I'm waiting for, were you a Seinfeld fan? Not really, okay. no. Frank, Frank Costanza had a, had a line and goes, I'm back, baby. I'm waiting to, to unveil yeah. that line. I'm waiting to do it on the air. So um, obviously, you're going to be here with us. If you want to follow Suncast, you can follow him on, follow him on Twitter at Suncast. You also are a uh, regular on the Gunna Geek Network. You do shows over mm-hmm. there with them. Uh, tell us a little bit about Gunna Geek. So Gunna Geek is a uh, network of podcasts, and their main show is the Gunna Geek show with Stephen, John Drew, Chris Farrell, and Stargate Pioneer, which I'll actually be on tomorrow. But they have a whole bunch of other podcasts out there, and if you want to check that out, it's GunnaGeek.com. And SP is right behind me, by the way. He is right behind you, and uh, you could also catch... Because he's the SNASA director. <laughs> he's the SNASA director. Uh, a lot of inside uh, jokes on that show, which I absolutely love. Yes. Uh, you could also catch him on gfknetwork.com. We, uh, we distribute their content on GFQ. Uh, we do have a lot to talk about, obviously, today. Uh, Paul's not here, and I thought it would be a little bit of a different show. We're also going to bring back an old-school tech uh, segment from Tech News Weekly, and that's our pick of the week. And I'm holding my pick in my hand right now. This is my pick. It's in my hand. It fits wow, it fits in the, in the palm of your hand? It fits in the palm of my hand, my pick. Uh, so that is that a little doesn't. teaser for later. You can't even see it. <laughs> you can't even see it. Uh, that's going to be my pick, uh, which we'll talk about, which I think a lot of you, uh, because more and more people are getting into streaming and podcasting and video production. And I, I used to get bombarded with these questions, which, which I absolutely love talking about. Uh, I, you know, when I did the IIB stuff, which I'm going to be doing a little bit more stuff, I'm getting a little bit more hands on back in the podcasting game. So I'm going to be doing a lot more of these nice tips for you guys. Uh, and pretty much everything that I talk about is kind of affordable when it comes to buying, because I know how expensive podcasting could get, video production could get. So that I, this is actually one of my favorite new devices that I've discovered over the last year. So that's a little teaser. Hey, before we continue, John, I want to take a moment and just talk about our great new sponsor, and that's Prime Video. As many of you know, I'm a huge Amazon Prime fan. Who isn't, right? In addition to the fast shipping from Amazon Prime, you could also get great entertainment delivered to you instantly through Prime Video channels. That's how it works. Create a TV lineup you love from 100-plus premium and specialty channels like Showtime, Stars, HBO, CBS All Access, Noggin, PBS Kids, which has been a, a big uh, a big network in my house over the last <laughs> two or three years since I've had kids. Uh, PBS Masterpiece, Acorn TV, and a whole lot more. All channels start with a free trial. You can start a seven-day free trial at, of any of the channels you haven't tried yet. You only pay for the tra- channels that you want. And here's a great thing. You can start free trials with over 100 channels by visiting tryprimechannels.com. Slash Andrew, that's tryprimechannels.com 
slash Andrew. Actually, I went through this, right? Because um, I, I, I cut cable a couple of years ago. I know a lot of people love cable, but I, I've, I've entered the world of cutting the cord. And I, I literally, I love the aspect of just picking stuff that I like. Like, I'm a big wrestling fan, so I have the WWE Network, for example. Um, I am a Shameless fan. It's returning for its ninth season. Uh, it returned for its ninth season this month. And I signed up for uh, Showtime on Amazon Prime channels. And I'm just starting to go through all the Shameless episodes that I've missed over the last two weeks. Also, Ray Donovan's returning, which I'm a big fan of, October 28th. Uh, you could also get HBO, CBS All Access, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, uh, obviously. Uh, Star Trek fan. I know, John, you love Star Trek, like me. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you could also get CBS All Access and catch up on live NFL, uh, SEC football games, originals like Star Trek Discovery, and a whole lot more. Uh, this is a great service provided from Amazon. We, we you know, uh, if, if you are a living human being, you know what Amazon is, you've purchase something on Amazon. A lot of you have Amazon Prime. This is another extension of Prime Video, which I love. Uh, you know what What my wife got into? I know this is not part of uh, Prime Video channels, but she loves the um, the Tom Clancy uh, show on there. And it has the guy from The Office. That's what she w started watching because we love The Office, and we absolutely loved it. I just wanted to the, say uh, that. The Jack Ryan? Yes, Jack Ryan. Yeah it, was actually, yeah, it was good. Yeah. Uh, did huh. you see it? I've 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 heard about it, but I have not seen it. I just didn't know if it was anything that's worth watching yet or Give not. Give it a shot. I, I I didn't think I would I was going to get into it, and I absolutely loved it. So uh, I need really something cool. new to binge watch. So. Listen, it's great. Also, try Prime Video Channels. Start your free trial uh, for over a hundred channels by visiting tryprimechannels.com slash slash Andrew. I want to thank them for supporting the show. I am very excited to get this going. Um, so, John. A couple of things to talk about here. Uh, I, I kind of touched on some of the stuff with Paul, but it, it's, you know, over the last week or two, a lot of information has not leaked about the Samsung event that's taking place October 2nd. So mm -hmm. we're about a week away. There is very little information about this event, huh? This is very interesting, considering if you look at news for cell phone new cell phone products over the past couple of months, because we just had the Apple event. Nothing was shocking there. Nothing was a surprise. We knew everything that was already going to be announced at this Apple event. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. And so we also have a lot of rumors and leaks for Google's Pixel 3. Now, yes, there's a conspiracy that perhaps um, Google is doing that on purpose. But nonetheless, we, we have what seems like a lot of leaked information about the Pixel 3. So now we have a new Samsung event, and this is very interesting because there's really nothing about this event. No. I mean, it's all speculation at this point, whether it's going to be a foldable phone, is it going to be something with uh, um, uh, the Note 9? Um, there's also renewed focus on Samsung's mid-range devices, but the event is called 4X or four times the fun. And so one of the speculation is perhaps they're going to have a phone with four cameras in it. Yeah. But again, so, there's just so little information about what they're actually going to announce at this event. So they also this week uh, announced a mid-range Galaxy A7 that has three cameras in it. Uh, mm -hmm. Three rear, one forward. So it's uh, it's uh, there's a depth perception camera. So it's an f2.2. There's a 24, mix, a 24 megapixel camera and an ultra wide 8 megapixel rear camera plus a 24 megapixel front facing camera so maybe that'll play a part in the four times the fun thing i don't know exactly what it is obviously you mentioned the folded the foldables maybe they could unveil something because the rumors were that we were going to get some sort of mm -hmm. foldable samsung device by january a preview to it i don't know this is very interesting for the fact that we don't have information regarding this yeah, I, I asked a couple of people today what their first thought was when I said that there's a Samsung event coming out. And one of their first things was, oh, foldable phone? Yeah. I'm like, well, that's interesting. I, personally, I have no interest in a foldable phone. I, I just don't see any appeal to something like that. I mean, I don't know. I, it depends. Listen, it depends on what it's going to be, right? It depends what the device will be. If we're talking about a courier-like device, you know, Microsoft has the same conversation regarding Andromeda, this foldable device i don't know if we're you know 
when the iPad came out, people were saying, we don't need a tablet. It's just a giant right. iPhone. And look at it, you know, it became one of the top selling tech devices of all time. I mean, it became a, a total amazing thing. The other rumor was that maybe Samsung is going to have some sort of camera. Because a couple of years ago, they announced something called the Ca Galaxy Zoom. This is going back about four or five years ago. Right. And it was essentially the Samsung S4 with a camera. Right. With a giant camera on it. So maybe it's going to be something like that. Maybe that's the event. But I'm sorry. It's going to be October 11, not October 2nd. There is an October 2nd event. I think that's a, that's the uh, Microsoft event. So we'll find out October 11th what this is. But but in the history of Samsung and all the leaks, I'm very surprised we have not seen anything. I am too. Uh, I, again, considering that we just knew everything ahead of time what the Apple event was going to announce. I mean, there was, like I said, there was zero surprise for that yeah. at all. So it's like, okay, well, I mean, there could still be, you know, some sort of leak between now and October 11th. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, listen, it, it, it could happen. But normally we, we kind of get a good idea. But the fact that uh, the talking heads on the Internet have not gotten any kind of information regarding this is um, surprising to me. Because I asked yeah. a couple of people that, that I know that are normally in the loop of these things, especially on the Android side, and they don't know what, what this announcement really is going to be. They're just assuming that could point. also lend itself to being something other than what they normally do. Not necessarily, you know, a Galaxy Note 9 type of device, not a flagship device, not something that is going to necessarily something that people keep an eye out for. Listen, maybe like, it's yes, going to be a laptop. Keep an eye out for pants and all that stuff. But um, I, I think this this could possibly throw people for a loop. Yeah. Because it's it's something that isn't leaked. And it is kind of exciting considering that, you know, over the past several years, a lot of times we already have all this information leaked ahead of an event like this. So yeah. this is actually kind of fun in the fact that we don't know what it is. So hopefully it lives up to the hype that is getting right now. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, we'll be talking more about that over the next couple of weeks. Uh, talking about devices that we do know that came out, we saw Amazon do like a secret <laughs> event last week. Uh, I, it was, it was weird how, how quickly this thing escalated. They announced a whole bunch of products and I kind of want to go down this and, uh, talk about it quickly because there's yeah. so many things here. So we had the iPhone event last week and then at the end, um, beginning, what, what day did they do this, John? Was it Wednesday or Thursday? The iPhone event? No, no, no. I'm sorry. The, the Amazon event. Oh gosh. Let me see. My article says that. It was the 22nd. No, 20 Friday. Yeah, I think it was Friday. Okay. Thursday or Friday. Thursday or Friday. Uh, so here are the couple of things. There's a new Echo Dot, $49.99. Uh, Amazon will sell you two of them for $90. Amazon's new Echo Show is up for pre-order at $229, but you'll save $100 if you buy a second one. Uh, let's see what else they had here. I'm just trying to go through the, the list here of their devices. The Echo Plus... It's, it has a new redesign, and it includes a free Philips uh, Hue bulb, the Fire TV yeah. recast, the Echo Show, like I said, the Ring stick-up camera, Amazon Smart Plug, Amazon Echo Auto, Amazon Basics Microwave with Alexa support, because we all need that, an Echo, Amazon Echo Clock, wall clock, because we people put wall clock, clocks up in their house, Amazon Echo Input, Amazon Echo Link Amp. So where do you want to begin with this? <laughs> well, it's clear that um, smart home tech is definitely a growing market and something that Amazon has, you know, really proliferated, especially with their um, Alexa Amazon Assistant, which I'm going to mute now because I just activated it. I'm sorry if I ac <laughs> activated anybody else's because I know when people do that, yeah, they yeah, just yeah. don't like it. So I apologize <laughs> for that. Uh, I'm going to try and not say the A word. So the A -word, hopefully yeah. I don't activate anybody else's. <laughs> but yeah, they announced like a whole slew of like 12 different devices, uh, mostly just uh, new generations of devices. But they did have a few new devices that I thought were pretty interesting. And yeah. um, I know we were just t talking about cutting the cord with uh, Amazon Prime channels. And so one of, one of the products that they announced was the Fire TV Recast, 
which is an over-the-air DVR. And it has two models, one that uh, comes with a 500 gigabyte hard drive and one that comes with a one terabyte hard drive. So this is essentially a network TV tuner. Mm -hmm. You put this on your network via a network cable or Wi-Fi, and then you connect an over-the-air antenna to it, and you can record up to um, two or four streams, depending on what model you have, and you can play back simultaneously two pre-recorded shows, which is pretty cool. You can play this on to any Amazon device, any iOS device, and any Android device. So if you're looking to cut the cord, but you still want some like over the air and some DVR like features. This is a pretty cool way to get this. Yes, you still need to have like an Amazon Fire TV device for every TV that you want to watch this with. But this is cool. The fact that they're they have their own DVR now over the air DVR. So you can get that over the air content for free. Mm -hmm. You just have to split the antenna, connect it up, and then you can watch any live TV channel through your Fire TV iOS device or Android device. Yeah, very cool. Um, so there was a couple other things like the Echo input. It brings Alexa to your speakers. So you, you yeah, can so essentially just it, connect it to anything. Everybody knows what the Echo Dot is. It's basically the, the smaller version of the Echo. It's a little hockey puck looking type of thing. And it, it, you just connect it up to any device that you already have speakers with. And you have that whole uh, Amazon A word experience. The input is an actually smaller version of the Echo Dot. It's like a little where, hockey puck. Yeah, it's, it's little, but it's actually smaller, and it doesn't have the built-in speaker into it. So you can just connect this. It's basically the cheapest way you can get an Echo and the uh, Amazon A-Word experience in your home. I think it's only like $34.99, and you just connect it to any device that you have speakers, and you can use Amazon's uh, uh, Home Assistant with it so the other thing that they announced was an amplifier the echo link amp stream and amplify hi-fi music hi-fi uh yeah and they speakers. also um announced a sub which is Did very they? interesting but i didn't see this is uh this is also a growing niche market out there i know sonos has a pretty big market with um the products that they sell that connect to the home and a lot of people are now deciding that well i'm doing all this smart home stuff well i'd like to add audio into all of this stuff i'd like to have some sort of amplifier some sort of speakers stereo speakers and this is a way to do that this is a way to get them into that growing market that audiophiles and anybody that listens to audio and want to control um audio in their home and have a much more hi-fi experience than just connecting an echo dot or any sort of smart speaker to their home this is yeah. this is their way of having a smart speaker yeah also they announced a 25 dollar and 24.99 dollar uh amazon smart plug that works with alexa yeah i like this a lot because yeah. i've looked into this to to connect some of my other devices that i would possibly want to control via my assistant and if you buy i think two of them you get ten dollars or the discount is that you get $10 off when purchased with any Echo, Echo Dot, Echo Plus, or Echo Show. So this is pretty cool. They actually have this design so that you can stack both of them in one single outlet. So if you have so that you traditional both. you know, outlet, you can actually plug two of these in, and it's not going to get in the way of anything else. So it's yeah, pretty yeah. cool that the fact that you can take any device, any appliance that you have, and basically connect it to this outlet. Yeah. Um, the Echo Show, the, they announced the second generation one. And mm -hmm. um, I'm curious about this because who is this catering to? I've always wondered that. Um, it's for the people that have a little bit more interest in visual media. You know, they're they're in the kitchen. They want to look up recipes and stuff like that, or they want to check on their security camera. Or now, if they have the 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 TV recast, they can stream live TV or pre recorded TV. Okay, so so you you've got some you've got some security cameras in your home. I if do. You had the Echo Show. You could pull up your security camera on the Echo Show. I could actually. I was thinking about that, and that would be great. You could also do Skype on this. I believe so. I haven't tried that out since I don't have an Echo Show, but yeah. So this is very interesting. So essentially, what it is, it's a, um, it's an Atom processor. It's an Intel Atom inside. I don't think mm -hmm. a lot of people knew that. 
So it's an Intel Atom. It's running Amazon's whatever software. I don't know what they call it now. Uh, and it has Skype. So I'm curious. Like I could see this being awesome like in the living room or in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. You're doing the recipes. You're playing some Spotify because it has a speaker on it. You want to Skype somebody, you Skype. You could do, and then you could go and watch the, you know, the security cameras if you if you have like all the Ring devices, for example, because Amazon owns Ring. Uh, yep, it gets very expensive because, like, look at that. That thing is two twenty nine. Then the new mm -hmm. Ring Stick Up Cam wired HD camera with Alexa, by the way. Oh, sorry, sorry, the A word. Did I turn it on? <laughs> Did I trigger it? Sorry, guys. Um, that's another hundred and seventy nine dollars. So this thing, you know, it gets up there little by little. Yeah, but a lot of people are excited to be able to do this stuff. I know a couple of guys that are on the Gun and Geek Network that are really into this, and they basically have several Echo Dots. Um, they've got a lot of uh, smart home devices, smart bulbs and whatnot in their home. They've got a lot of stuff that's connected to their network, and it's it's they have a lot of fun doing this stuff. And it's, 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 it's really right now, I think, for the tech enthusiast, um because they, they like playing with this stuff and i think it will eventually grow even bigger it'll become more consumer right now it's still kind of limited to the tech enthusiast that wants to put that amount of money into their home but yeah. i think it's kind of cool and it shows you what you can do with this stuff so they also announced the echo auto which yeah is... this is right now available via invite only by the way Oh, really? So there's very few people that actually have this product or can actually order this product, but it's essentially a uh, Bluetooth speaker that sits on your dashboard. That's 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 the way you should think of this device. But it has the A word in it, so mm. you can do anything that you would normally do with an Echo Dot. You can do with the Amazon uh, Auto device, the Echo Auto. Yeah, I. I... So here, here's how I see this. Like I in my in my car, I just got a new Volvo, and it has obviously it has Google, uh, you know, Google's car, uh, Android Auto, Android and, uh, Auto, CarPlay. and CarPlay. Yeah, I, I keep I yeah. keep mixing the two names, um, and that that incorporates Google Now, right? When you connect it to that, and it mm -hmm. incorporates Siri. I think they this is going to be a major battle for for Alexa, uh, for for Echo and, and for Amazon because they've already penetrated that market and you don't have that ability to be integrated because you don't have a device that connects in that sense. Right. You know, all you're getting is speech. So you're going to say, uh, you know, a word, start my road trip pr playlist. But nonetheless, there are people out there that would be interested in a device like this. Yes, it's still going yeah, to be absolutely. a small market and small subset of people that would use this device. But nonetheless, it's something that people would buy because they want to be able to, you know, when they're driving home, like as they're driving home, they want to activate something in their home from their vehicle. Yeah. So you could say, Alexa, set my thermostat to 68 degrees. I'm so sorry I did that, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's very hard not to. Yeah, yeah, it, it's uh, it's very difficult. Hey, I do want to kind of talk about this uh, home automation stuff a little bit since we went down that rabbit hole. Uh, okay. I know that you've gotten more and more interest in this subject, and so have I. Right now, I'm redoing my entire house because uh, it's a war zone, and I'm incorporating smart uh, outlets in everything. So That's smart. Yeah, so we're doing smart outlets, smart lights. Everything is going to be you know connected. Ooh. Oh boy. Do you hear that? Like what? 10 cop cars just like flew by with their new sirens. Oh, so since we're talking about the A word, John, I want to talk about the other A word, and that's away travel. Away makes affordable, high quality suitcases that charges your phone. I, this is my this is my carry on of choice. I but by, by the way, I'm one of these people. I when I travel, which I used to do a whole lot, and I'm going to be doing a whole lot more in the next couple months. Uh, I always bring a carry on and my goal, it's almost a game on how little I take with me when I travel. So when I was going and staying at Spencer's house, I literally would bring a backpack and that was it for my laptop. That, that was all I would bring. But obviously you can't do that when you're traveling. My away travel suitcase, it's tiny. It's a great uh, carry on and it does everything I need and it charges my phone. When I was in, when I was in Barbados, 
My phone was dead. We were in the airport. There was some flight issues. I needed to find out, and I couldn't find an outlet to plug my phone. And guess what? I just plugged it into my suitcase. Imagine that. It's amazing. By cutting the middleman, Away is able to offer a perfect luggage made with high-quality materials at a much lower cost. It's actually extremely affordable. Uh, it comes in 10 different colors, 5 different sizes. The carry-on, the bigger carry-on, the kids' carry-on, plus the medium bag and the large bag. Away has designed the perfect suitcase to make your travel experience stress-free. And you know what? We could all use that considering how stressful traveling is, John. It's out of, it's out of control at this right. point. Going through TSA and then having, you know, uh, your flight delayed and then maybe you're, you're traveling like a lunatic on standby because you like to make your life miserable and terrible. So you, you, you get a buddy pass from a friend and you say, hey, I want to go to Vegas. And they say, here's my buddy pass. And you think it's perfectly fine. But guess what happens? You're sitting there and it's a game of drawing numbers. It's like the lottery. And you're losing your mind. You know what? If I could take one little thing away from my miserable traveling experience, this is it. I could charge my phone. It's ultra lightweight, ultra durable, made with premium impact resistant German polycarbonate. Paul's a big uh, Paul's a big fan of that, by the way. Big fan. Uh, smooth ride in any direction. Four three sixty design uh, designed degree spinning wheels, so it makes it super easy. Listen, guys, this is great. I absolutely love these guys. I I it's my suitcase for everything. I use it when I'm going into the city if I need to pack some stuff with me because it's so easy and so durable. If I'm traveling anywhere, that's what I use, and you should too. Go to awaytravel.com slash Andrew and use the promo code Andrew to get $20 off your order. That's awaytravel.com slash Andrew. Use the promo code Andrew to get $20 off your order. You know, I almost became unhinged during this live read. Did you notice that? (laughs) I went down a really dark TSA traveling nightmare that many people experience when they travel and this wait wait got, until you start traveling with your kids i have i have and there's i'm sorry but a way cannot That's... fix that <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately i'm not sure there's much you can do about that yeah a way cannot i wish that there was a there was like an app a way like i could plug my kids <laughs> on the suitcase and it'll it'll calm them or something no it's actually not bad it's it's not as bad as people think it is um so I'm very interested in, in, in these Amazon devices. The smart plug I'm going to get. I'm very curious about the stick, uh, the stick up camera, uh, the ring stick, stick up camera and the mm-hmm. ring line, uh, because I actually I need to get a ring. Uh, they were supposed to send me a ring pro a couple of years ago. I would uh, love to get more into this stuff. I just don't have the money to. Oh, so listen, who it? does? But, you know, like, it gets very expensive. Yeah. It gets very I would expensive. love to have have a couple security cameras, some smart bulbs and whatnot, because I, I'll tell you what, you know what I really like about my Echo Dot, and, and this is what I use use it for mainly every single night when I go to bed, mm. I just say, A word, watch Fire TV. And it turns it and on. And so as I'm walking towards my bedroom, my TV turns on so that I can watch a little bit of TV before I go to bed. That's great. Love it. That way I don't I don't have to touch a remote. I just don't I just walk in and it's all set. I just have to press a, press the play button. Yeah. Um I want to talk about you and I used to do a lot of segments on, you know, 4G service when we were doing Tech News Weekly and internet service and and you know, it, it seems like it was so rapid back then. You know, 2 3 years ago things were changing constantly. Upgrades were happening, h- higher speed packages. Right now on 4G, I get about 120 megabits a second. Uh, mm-hmm. Up and down. I mean, it's actually. You're also I'm, in New York City. So I mean, I'm in, I'm in the yeah a major market. Yeah, I'm in New York City, so it's a major You're market. Lucky. Yeah, um, but this is actually very, very interesting, and I think a lot of people are going to be very curious about how this works. So Verizon a week and a half ago uh, announced that they are going to have at home 5G service starting October 1st in select markets. They're starting it out in Houston, Indianapolis, Los Angeles, Sacramento. So with their 5G service, uh, and they're calling it, this is, this is real 5G service, it's $50 a month for existing Verizon wireless customers, $70 for non-Verizon customers, and you are going to get anywhere from 300 megabits to 1 gigabit at peak times. I don't know what that means and how they're going to do that, but you're getting anywhere from 300 to 1 megabit, and it is not capped. This is not capped. So I find this very interesting. And I'm curious how this is going to impact well, 
home internet. You know, because that's, you know that's not going to last. I I, I feel like this is. I don't know about like that, a, John. I, I look look at all the stuff that they're doing now with um, data caps. Normally, this is why this is why I'm saying it. It it, it this may be the direction we're going in. So when you sign that would up, be nice. When you sign up for three months, like let's say you get the five G service, you also get three months of YouTube TV, and they're they're really pushing. Uh, they give you. They're also giving you a choice of an Apple TV or a Google Chromecast. So this is for streaming content, obviously. Mm-hmm. So how this will play out really depends on the providers actually offering you service, like service that you want, and not capping you, not screwing you in this sense. I mean, the fact that they're talking about streaming content. And this is now going to be 300 megabits a second. Uh, it's very big. So T-Mobile I don't also even started have that at home. At home, T-Mobile started doing their details in their own in-home 5G goals. They plan on taking on Comcast and Charter. Uh, so you could already see how they're playing this. They're saying that um, they're going to be offering this. Blah blah blah. I'm just going through the uh, the story here. So they they're also going to be offering high speed internet, and it's not going to be throttled like your phone so So they claim so they claim this is very interesting because this is really the if they do this properly why would anybody sign up for cable service you know like like the traditional internet providers because why would you want to do that why would you want wires everywhere just have this one box connected and you're good uh i'll tell you right now because Mm. i get one bar where I live. For you, yes. That is actually a great point. But let's say and for me, let's say major markets. That would translate to having a decent internet experience for 5G. I just I just don't see that happening. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you look at someone like me, right? I, let's say, okay, let's so, look at me. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Let's look at me and how I get internet. So right now I get, I have Verizon Fios. And I'm getting one gigabit. I have a one gigabit plan. I pay $75 a month for it. If I'm Verizon, what's easier to maintain? An entire fiber infrastructure going from home to home to home to home and you got multiple devices or one device and it connects to the same thing that your internet, uh, that all your phones are connecting to. This is a future proofing for Verizon when it comes to maintenance. The upkeep for these lines, it, it, it's very cost. Uh, it, I mean, the cost is extremely high, but it's extremely taxing on them. And I'm not defending Verizon here. I'm just saying uh, when we talk about it, and it comes down to the consumer because you know what? The prices hit the consumer when it comes to that. Uh, bad service hits the consumer. So this will be the future of Internet. I mean, we know that wireless is going to be the future for most. I I think the benefit the benefit here is for Verizon more than it is for the consumer, but the consumer also benefits because it's one simple device. I think there's going to be a, a market for that, but at the same time, I, there, there's going to be people like you and me that have to have that reliability, and I just don't see these networks having that sort of reliability. Right, reliability. Excuse me. Quite frankly. Um, this article makes it sound like pie in the sky type of stuff. And knowing what I know about, you know, these, these mobile networks and carriers and stuff, Verizon, T-Mobile, et cetera, that's not necessarily how they've, they've operated in the past. You know, they try to do all these little things here and there to get you. And it just sounds like a lot of pie in the sky. But you know what though, in, in the home, they have to be competitive because you already have, an existing service provider. So sure, they have to now not, grab you. That could change in the future down the road. Yes, they're going to sell you this right now. But, you know, as soon as, you know, they have a lock on everything, you know, mm. they, they they have, you know, all those people, they're going to start experiencing, you know, congestion or something. They're going to start doing trap shaping, throttling. And yeah, I, I just I just see this as, yes, it's going to be great for a period of time. But eventually down the road, you're going to see the traffic shaping and the throttling. Well, you know what you're also going to see? So now Verizon's doing it. T-Mobile's doing it. Sprint's going to do it. AT&T's going to do it. All those little, you know, the secondary ISPs, 
are going to start doing it. T-Mobile's uh, uh, time what a Spectrum now. Spectrum might do a wireless thing like this. Comcast might enter it. So I think what's going to happen, this market is going to become very competitive because it's so cost efficient to them to give you a device and have a wireless network and maintain that Comcast compared right to right now has an uh, MVNO agreement. I think with um, Sprint or T-Mobile are one of the carriers to yeah. have um, wireless service. Yeah. So they, they already, it exists, but this is going to be a major competition. And I, I'm actually, I, I see the, um, the outlook is very hopeful in my opinion, because the maintenance is going to be less for them. And they're going to be more willing to be competitive with each other. And they're going to be going neck and neck. Everybody wants that wireless because remember, it's not just internet. It's inter- if they get you with the internet, they also get you for the cell phone. I wish I could share your optimism on this. I just, <laughs> I'm very skeptical about the claims and everything. Listen, I'm too about the claims. Absolutely. But I don't know. We'll see. I'm very curious about this. I'm excited to test it out when it comes to New York. Uh, if you if you are in one of these markets and you are using it, please let us know. You could always you know contact us, and I'm I'm curious what what it looks like for you. But this this I'm listen. I'm more confident that they can maintain a wireless network than figure out which cable is bad in my neighborhood that's causing the the file service to get you know messed up. You know, I feel like it. I, I, I'm more confident that they can figure that out than then figure out my files problems. Every time it rains now, one of my lines goes out. They can't figure it out. That is weird. Yeah. Can't figure it out. So there's ways to determine that. I know. Well, they, they, it's a whole thing. So you know what? You know what I was reading? I was reading this interesting article. It's 10 years ago. Uh, Android came out. And yeah. it's amazing. 2008. So, 2008, Android came out, and the T-Mobile G1 was the first major Android device that they put out. And Jess's friend Maggie had this phone, and it was abysmal. It was terrible. HTC had made it. It was absolutely terrible. It was on T-Mobile. And I remember thinking, I'm like, wow, you know, this is pretty cool, but my trio is a lot better. (laughs) (laughs) How sad does that sound? <laughs> oh, my God. It was terrible. So it was, oh, my God. Think about this, okay? It was $179 with a two-year contract, a far cry from the $1,000 phones of today. Uh, like yeah. the iPhone 3G, it launched in July. It was exclusively on the T-Mobile 3G network. It integrated with Amazon MP3. Oh, my God. Since now, Google Play Music, obviously. Uh, it had Windows Live Messaging, Yahoo Messaging, AOL, Google Talk. Uh, the Play Store wouldn't arrive for another year, by the way. But they had something called the Android Marketplace that allowed installation of free apps. This was the beginning. Uh, I think what really set them off was the Droid, the Motorola Droid. That was the one that I had. And the interest, I mean, do you sure. remember those videos, those stupid Motorola tips and tricks videos I used to do and you used to get like 300,000 views? Yeah. It's wild. Um, this was the beginning and we, we look at this device and we say, my God, this was a, not a great device 10 years Whoa. ago, 10 years from now, what are we going to be talking about? You know, we're going to look at the, I, the, the Samsung galaxy S nine and compare it to what the smartphone of 2028 is. Are we going to look at this device the same way that we're looking at, you know, the T-Mobile G one? I, I think that's safe to say of any like first generation device. If you take a look back at the first generation iPhone, the iPhone was a heavily compromised product. I think yeah. Android was pretty much the same way. I mean, obviously over 10 years, things have been perfected. Things have been improved. Things have gotten a lot better. But historically, first generation devices are compromised to some degree to which, you know, it improves over the years. Yeah. I think it's interesting. But do you think, okay, so forget about first round devices, right? Like, let's look at 2028. Are we going to have this 
idea of what smartphones are and look at it and say, my God, it was they were they were so crappy back then. You only got 14 hours of battery life? Well, or whatever. We got. Nobody gets 14 hours of battery life. But, <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? You what what's the perception going to be of today's devices compared in 10 years I, I think it's amazing to even just conceptualize this yeah i i think i, I see i i have i always have a hard time conceptualizing what the future is going to be i think it's always fun to look at the past and see where we've come from the past to now but going from now to the future that's so many endless possibilities that you just never know exactly where we're going to be. Is it going to be bigger devices? Because we had that resurgence. Okay. Yes. We want smaller, smaller, smaller devices. We want the, we want the Motorola razor. Now here we are with the iPhone max. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well we've gone in completely opposite directions over the past 10, 15 years. So in the next 10 to 15 years, are things just going to become like phablets? More like the you know the the iPad Mini is that what we're going to have around? Yeah, I mean, or listen, it's it's very interesting because you look at you know two thousand and eight for example, uh, Microsoft proposed to buy Yahoo. Remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, Apple left. I'm just looking at top ten tech stories, right? Apple announces last year a Mac World. It's not even it, Windows Seven came out. iPhone three G launch date was confirmed. God, this is all ten uh, years ago. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, the iPhone three G. Okay, so the the three G changed everything really for for Apple. The iPhone three G oh, was yeah. the device. So it, it's fascinating when you look at this and you look at the products. Well, well, I mean, it, I'm hold on. Uh, continue. Let, let, let me let uh, yeah. me ask you. What do you think? the smartphone of the future is going to be like is it is it form factor wise i don't know i think i think the form factor is what we have right now i i think we've we've come to listen 10 years from now someone's going to pull this video up and be like yeah this idiot didn't know that we're going to be able to shoot phones from our <laughs> I mean, eyes in, yeah uh, because in 10 years we went from the iphone's 3.5 inch sure. display to now with the iphone x max excuse me iphone 10 max having a i think is a 6.8 uh, 6 point whatever screen. yeah um listen I, I don't i don't know i i think but form factor wise this is going to be what we always carry in our hands uh it might get a little bit listen a lot of it has to do with how it feels right you could always go thinner sure. and fast obviously everything's going to go faster the cameras are going to get big better uh the the performance is going to get better the battery life is going to get better but as far as form factor goes there's only so much that can feel good in our hand. And a lot of things come into play here. There's a lot of moving parts, right? It has to sure. weigh. It can't just be light as a feather. It can't feel like this because then it's it, not. It has to have some sort of substantial feeling. Exactly. It. it has to have some sort of, the edges have to be a certain feel. The display has to be a certain size. Uh, a lot of things come into play when it comes, when we say, okay, is it going to get faster? Is it going to get smaller? Is it going to get lighter? Uh, we've already come to the point where I, we have bezel-less phones and the sure. batteries are getting bigger without the phone getting bigger. So a lot of that is already happening. Uh, I don't think we're going to – maybe foldable in, in, in phones. In years, do. Apple will finally find a way to put the fingerprint sensor and everything everything underneath the screen. Maybe in 10 years they'll figure it out, right? We won't. <laughs> we won't do it. But, okay, so here's the thing. I, I'm on, uh, on techradar.com, and this is the top 10 hottest tech products in 2008. Okay? iPhone 3G changed everything. Boom. Fine. We mm -hmm. could all agree. The T-Mobile G1 was the first Android phone uh, that became – that, that, that kind of got some sort of popularity. The i7, the new Core i7, the Sony XEL1. What is that? I don't remember that. Is that a camera? Let's find out. That sounds like it. No, it was a display. It was the first. It was an OLED display. Okay. It was an OLED display. Okay. Uh, Windows 7. We still talk about to this day. It was so. <laughs> Windows 8 was so bad that we still talk about Windows 7 to this day. Uh, <laughs> That's so Chrome, bad. People still use Windows 7. Chrome launched in September. So it's 10 years of Chrome. Mm -hmm. That's wild. And uh, Chrome had a big update this year. Uh, the Nintendo Fit Wii, the Wii Fit, which people thought they could lose weight doing. 
like my father-in-law. He thought this was going to be his <laughs> workout companion. He used it twice, and it sat on the box. Uh, the like MSI Wind. Product. I don't know. I don't remember what the Wind was. I think it was a uh, like a net. It was a netbook. Yeah, it was a netbook. Uh, netbooks. That went away. We look at it now and be saying, "Oh my god, that was so dumb." Yeah. And Virgin 50 I, megabit per second broadband. You know, now now that I started thinking about the future, I, I think a lot of what the advancements are over the past 10 years have been, you know, technological in terms of what technology is in our phones. Yeah. And the materials that we use. I mean, to think 10 years ago, we would have a curved display smartphone. So yeah. in, in the next 10 years what sort of products smartphones will we have based on new technology, new manufacturing technology? I yeah. mean, one of the things that's, that's still being pioneered are flexible displays. Yes, they can be done, but they're still very pricey. But at the same time, in the next 10 years, the price of that and the manufacturing ability to, to produce those types of flexible displays could greatly improve that we now see uh, flexible displays in smartphones where you can bend the phone in certain ways and it'll have some sort of give. Whereas now smartphones are pretty much rigid. Yeah. I mean, I think that the, obviously, yeah, you're right. The design will change a little bit. Not, think, non-breakable displays. Think about that. What, what, what if, what if these, these flexible displays in 10 years are in your phone and you're no longer able to break your screen when you drop it? You mean to tell me every teenage girl walking around in 10 years will not have a broken phone, will not have yes. a broken display? It's over for my buddy Mike at, uh, at in his repair shop at <laughs> Guru Repairs. My buddy Mike, uh, he, he's here in Bayside, actually. If you guys are in Queens, then you, uh, I'll give him a little plug. Uh, his company's called Guru Repairs in, uh, in Bayside. Uh, it's like every, every day, the bus loads, all these girls coming from the school, all these kids coming from the school. <laughs> And they're just walking in with broken iPhones. He changes like hundreds of these a day. It's it's mind blowing. So he'll be out of business. So uh, I'm sorry to let him know. Would um, you pay a hundred dollars yeah. more for a, a, an unbreakable display? Yeah, in this in this in this make pretend world where glass doesn't yes. scratch and glass. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. I don't, but I don't break my display. I don't break my phone ever. Now that I said that, I'm gonna drop it today. I guarantee you. I've, I, I've, I've done it once. You've done it once. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's very interesting. So, John, uh, to wrap it up, before I wrap it up, I do want to bring back an old school segment from our old show, Tech News Weekly, and that's our picks of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, every week we would pick a tech product, a piece of software, uh, anything that had to do with tech, and we would discuss it uh, in, and give an example. So do you want to go first or you want me to go first? I can go first. You go first. Because uh, I, so I've started getting a little bit more into watching uh, content on YouTube um, and I found some really good stuff. Uh, I think I talked about years in the past about a uh, YouTube channel called Bright Sun Films that does some very interesting stuff. Uh, I started watching a lot of like uh, Back to the Future and Star Trek content behind the scenes stuff on YouTube. And I just kind of wormholed into finding all this stuff on YouTube. And I think one of my new favorite YouTube channels is a channel called Techmoan. It's a guy from uh, named Matt from the UK that does a lot of reviews of tech products, but it's not your typical reviews. He talks about uh, products from the past that were very interesting, kind of odd, unique in some way, and it's very interesting. So I've been watching a lot of his videos. Um, I think the latest one was Vinyl Video. Playing video from a 45 RPM record. Yes, oh, very this cool. is crazy to think that. What's uh, the channel again? I'm going to go there right now. Tech Moan, T E C H M O A N. Oh, yeah. I was just watching his videos. Yeah, they're very well produced. There's yeah. so much information in it. And in and, and, and this particular video that I'm, um, I've am i watched, he talks about vinyl video uh, or video being on vinyl as early as 1927. To think that video can be put onto a vinyl record. It's yeah. just mind blowing to me. I'm a, I'm a video guy. I like, I produce video. I do video stuff all the time. So to think about this, yeah, sure. The quality is not going to be great, but the fact that it can even be done. That's yeah, pretty I've cool. Watched, um, I watched a bunch of his videos. I, I didn't even realize what you were saying until I checked it out. I, um, yesterday I watched his, uh, 
the VHS, uh, like the history of like VHS versus beta. Uh, I watched that, yeah. and I've also seen he had a really good video on Laserdisc, and he did a comparison. Yeah, high edition Laserdisc and, and yeah. just the history. It's really nice because he gives a lot of great history and timeline of where these products are, how they fit in with with the other technology of the era, why they were popular, how they became popular, when they died off, et cetera. And it's just absolutely mind blowing to see him demonstrate these products that were from like the 80s and 90s and and even early 2000s that just, you know, in some shape or form had some sort of popularity but never quite get, got there. And, and I think the VHS versus beta is, is typical of a lot of the products that he, he reviews in the sense that yes. Okay. So beta was superior to VHS, but for whatever reason, VHS became the format of choice and not beta. Yeah. Cost more than anything yeah. else. Uh, very so interesting. By the way, yeah, there. Uh, he does great stuff. Uh, I, I, I had, I totally, when you said the name, I was like, what are you talking about? And I put it, and I'm like, yeah, oh, he's crap, I just watched his videos. 2009. All the time. Yeah, and since he does great. Yeah. And great detail with the videos. He does about 15 to 20 minutes on these videos, and great. he goes into great detail, which I absolutely love. Uh, you guys should definitely check it out. It's Tech Moan uh, on YouTube, T E C H M O A N. Uh, and he does great, great content. Uh, that's a great pick, John. Yeah, you know what video I really enjoyed was the mm. most expensive music format in the world. It's, 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 and, and he's, he's went on to talk about real to real music on real to reels and, yeah. and just the, the history of that. And the fact that there's there's now apparently a, a new growing market for music on real to real. Like he was playing some demo reel to reels from like the 1950s or 1960s. And the sound quality is actually astounding on these reel to reel tapes. I just it's like bid. I can't believe they had that kind of quality back then. I just bid on a reel to reel on eBay. For my studio like yes yeah, i mean there's just you, yeah. you could just go on his channel and just sit there for a day or two i bid on stuff. a uh, on a pioneer reel to reel uh because i wanted as because i'm redoing the studio and i wanted it to be like mm -hmm. a little focus point with like my old microphones uh and i just bid on a, uh, a pioneer one yesterday that's cool cool stuff i love it uh great yeah so on. definitely check him out yeah uh, so my pick uh, is the, and you guys heard me mention this. So people have been asking me how I've been doing the show from my office in the city. And the way that I'm doing it is two ways. One, I was going to hook this up today and use it, but the battery died. I'm using a Sony a7. Uh, it's a mirrorless camera, but it has phenomenal 1080p HDMI output, clean HDMI output. And I'm bringing it in to my computer, to my MacBook via this little thing. And that's the cam link. It's the Elgato cam link. This tiny thing does 1080p 60 video. You connect it. And essentially what it does, it works with, uh, with everything. Skype, for example. It works with Skype. It works with WebRTC. Uh, it is it's super low latency because it essentially tricks Skype into thinking it's a webcam. John, do you remember there was a device like this years ago? Vaguely. I can't remember the name, but essentially what it does, it does unencrypted HDMI and it tricks, it uses, you know, the, the, the software code, uh, codec that, you know, is recognized by Skype and everything, but, uh, it tricks Skype to think it's a webcam and it's able to send the resolution, force the resolution that you are sending into it. So we've done this with webcams, with capture cards, for example, like the Blackmagic Intensity Pro. It was the big capture card years ago before Elgato came in the game. You could get it to recognize, and you had to, you had to select it, but the most that you could do was 720 on this thing. You couldn't go above 720. Um, there are Elgato capture cards out there, other ones, which I have three of them that I've been testing. It does not, it works great, does 1080 if you're doing OBS, or you're doing vMix, or you're doing Wirecast, it works great, but... It can't work via Skype or FaceTime or WebRTC. This works with all of them, which is unbelievable. Cool. So when so when I'm doing the show, John, I'm sending you 1080p. Yeah. Um, it, through WebRTC, and I've done it through Skype as well. I've sent 1080p through Skype with this hundred dollar USB three device. Uh, I've become a big fan of it. It works. I mean, just, I can't believe how easily it works. 
That's the thing. I, I'm shocked. There's as many people these days that are producing YouTube content or doing something with YouTube or doing something with yeah. video whatsoever, this is a pretty nifty product. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are now wanting higher quality video than what you can get with just your typical webcam. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, you c it has a whole list of, of cameras that work with it, obviously. What you want mm -hmm. is something that has clean HDMI. Uh, a lot of people oversee that when they're buying these cameras. You know, these DSLRs are able to give you provide you beautiful pictures. You need two things. One, clean HDMI. So there's no overlays over it. Unfortunately, my, my Canon uh, 80D doesn't do that. It doesn't do clean HDMI. It has an overlay, which sucks because it's a very expensive camera with, uh, with out of purpose right now for me. And uh, this one does it. And the other thing you want is the ability to do unlimited runtime. Most DSLRs shut down after a certain period of time when it's not being actively used uh, to, to consume the battery. So there are cameras out there that have unlimited uh, runtime. I highly suggest it. Or you could do what I'm doing. Like you connect the Canon HF G40 that I have or, or any other camera, you know, re regular webcam into this thing. So connect it via HDMI, pops right into your USB, and you're good to go. I, it's it's unbelievable how well it works. Highly, highly recommend it. That's the Elgato Cam Link. Wild, huh, John? That's cool. This little thing. This little like thing it. is doing 1080. Yeah, love it. John, thank I've you for doing this. I've always wanted to upgrade my video, and, and I think that, that would be a cool way to try and get into higher quality video than just a webcam. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Uh, John, thank you so much for doing the show with me today. This thank was a you. pleasure. Uh, you can follow John on Twitter at Suncast. You can follow me at Andrew Zarian. Of course, uh, What the Tech is everywhere podcasts are available. And on YouTube, subscribe to us. Uh, and we are going to be doing a lot more cool stuff in the coming months. I, I promise you that. And we'll see you all next time. Take care.